Hello everybody! What do you know about diodes? A diode is a semiconductor device that essentially acts as a one-way switch for electrical current. It allows current to flow easily in one direction but severely restricts current from flowing in the opposite direction. It's called a semiconductor because it is made of semiconductor materials. For a better understanding of diodes, let's make a small introduction into semiconductors. As the name suggests, semiconductors are in between materials that conduct electricity and materials that are totally non-conductive. The most commonly used semiconductor material in electronics industry is silicon. Semiconductor materials have two current carriers, free electrons and holes. In an intrinsic semiconductor material, free electrons are produced when a material receives sufficient thermal energy to provide valence electrons from the valence band enough energy to jump into the conduction band. When valence electrons jump into the conduction band, they leave vacant seats in the valence band. These are named holes. The number of holes equals the number of free electrons in the undoped intrinsic semiconductor materials. On their own, semiconductor materials don't conduct electricity very well because they have no free charges to carry the current. They become useful by controlling their conductivity by doping them, which means adding impurities, free electrons or holes. For example, the number of free electrons in an intrinsic semiconductor, such as silicon, is increased by adding pentavalent atoms, which are atoms with five valence electrons, like arsenic, phosphorus, bismuth, etc. Phosphorus is covalently bonding with the silicon, leaving an extra electron. Therefore, the atom of phosphorus is a donor and gives the material a free electron meaning that this material will have more electrons, which are negative charge carriers, therefore it forms an n-type semiconductor. In order for an intrinsic semiconductor to have more holes, they are doped with trivalent impurities atoms such as borom, indium and gallium. By adding more trivalent material atoms increases the number of holes and increases the conductivity. This type of semiconductor is a p-type semiconductor because it has more positive charge carriers. The doping process converts intrinsic semiconductors into extrinsic semiconductors. When you bring together an n-type semiconductor and a p-type semiconductor, it forms a p-n junction which stays at the base of different semiconductor components, such as diodes. When such a junction is formed, the free electrons in the N regions tend to go into the holes near to the junction, creating a region where the carriers form a shield, named depletion region. This region creates an electric field, which prevents more electrons to go across. To break this shield, an electric field has to be applied in the opposite direction of the formed electric field. The potential value that has to be applied depends on the semiconductor materials. For silicon, it will be necessary a voltage of around 0.7 volts to be applied and for germanium, a 0.3 volts to be applied by connecting the positive terminal of the battery to the p-type and negative terminal to the n-type semiconductor it will push electrons away by the negative terminal of the batteries and will travel through the holes towards the positive terminal and the current will flow freely through the body of the diode this can be called forward bias meaning that a suitable positive voltage is applied between the two ends of the p-n junction. By applying a negative voltage results in the free charges being pulled away from the junction, resulting in the depletion layer width 
being increased. This has the effect of blocking the flow of current through the diode's PN junction. This can be called reverse bias. Basically, this is why diodes conduct in one way and block the current flow in the other. The P-type semiconductor is the anode and the N-type semiconductor is the cathode. The cathode is marked with a line on the body of the diode and also in its symbol drawing. We can make an analogy of a diode compared to a hydraulic check valve. A check valve allows fluid flow through it in only one direction, but it also has a resistance and if you don't push the liquid with an amount of pressure, it will not open. It is the same for applying a high enough potential on a diode to allow the flow of current. This is just the basic understanding of diode's principle. In next videos, we will discuss also about the parameters, behavior of diodes, what types are and where to be used. Until then, let the likes and subscribes flow like current through a forward bias diode.